A masked cult elder wielding a ceremonial dagger mistakes you for a fellow cult member. He slices open his hand, then raises it towards you suggestively. As a group, choose one option. Join him in the blood pact. Each player loses one HP, but you pass yourselves off as cult members and he goes on his way. Deny him and reveal your true identity. Begin combat. Here, three slippery stepping stones lead out over a wide, plague-infested cesspool. It will take great balance and skill to leap between the stones and reach the other side. The bubbling waters contain disturbing reminders of those who have failed before. One at a time, each player must roll their character die along with a chapter die four times. Each time a player's character die does not match the chapter die they rolled, they slip into the bog and gain one plague. If a player rolls double on any of the four rolls, they land safely. You are set upon by a horde of reanimated skeleton warriors. You become separated and each player must fight alone. Roll a chapter die in front of each player to represent the skeleton's attack, the skeleton attacking them. However, the skeletons can sense weakness. Players with less than half of their starting HP must roll two chapter dice instead. Begin combat. No player can rest until the skeletons attacking them are defeated. They may then either rest or help another player defeat theirs. A player aiding another takes damage as normal and must declare who they are aiding before they roll. So that is just a few of the sample cards of many that you can find in Escape the Dark Castle. So this is a game that I have mentioned before um, in my top 10. It is a absolutely fantastic game, one that I love. One that while it is entirely possible to play solo, I actually prefer this game as a group. And the way that we would play it most of all is we would play it like at the end of every game session, basically, we would play a game of Escape the Dark Castle. I also played it a bunch at the Dungeon Synth convention that I mentioned a while ago where I went and ran some games, and we played it uh, a handful of times. Every time we played it, every single time I have played this game, it has been an absolute riot. Everybody who has played it has loved it. Um, it's never fallen flat. It has always been fun. So what you're seeing out on the table is everything, I believe everything available for the game. And this is the base box and all of the expansions, everything fit in this small box. And that is one of the reasons why I love it so much. It takes up hardly any shelf space. It is super fun, super quick to set up to teach, to play, and to put away. Um, just almost no hassle. It's like a hassle-free game. And it's super thematic with a ton of great art and fun, lasting memories. So basically what you are doing in this game is you are just going to, at the beginning of the game, you are going to, if you have your, so all this explanation is going to assume that you have um, everything available in the game. Most of that will be the same if you just have the base game, but some of these things that you might see, you might only have if you have some expansions. So at the beginning of the game, you're gonna choose one of three starter cards, and each of these is, is slightly different, a slightly be uh, different beginning to the game. And this is going to be how you're going to start, uh, where the room that you're going to start in when you're trying to escape the dark castle. Then you're also going to randomly pick one of these bosses. And the bosses range from pretty difficult to absolutely grueling. Uh, some of these bosses can be quite challenging. And, uh, but it, it is always fun to see which one you are going to face when you finally reach the end of the dungeon, which boss is standing in your way to freedom. So you would pick a random 
boss. So this is your first card. This would be your last card. And then you're going to draw 15 random dungeon cards. And these are going to represent all of the various challenges that your party is going to have to overcome to escape the Dark Castle. So we would say, like, let's say that was 15 there. And then you would make a deck of cards with your starting room on top, your boss on the bottom, and your dungeon cards in the middle. Then you would randomly pick some characters. Let's say you were playing with two players, you would pick two characters. So the characters are uh, people such as the abbot, a shepherd, you have a mason, a fletcher, a tailor, a cook, a butcher, a bishop, a miller, a hunter, a smith, and a tanner. So you're not dealing with a whole bunch of like super top-notch heroes here. And as you can see, most of these characters have seen better days. Uh, they have been imprisoned in this dark castle for some time. Now the marks on the wall, those represent their stats. And you basically have three different stats. You have might, you have cunning, and you have wisdom. And the little marks next to each one of those, that dictates how many times that stat appears on your character uh, D6. So each of the characters has their own bespoke um, D6. So here we have the shepherd. So let's take a look at the shepherd. So the shepherd here is really good at uh, wisdom. And he, she, 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 uh, I can't quite tell, but he, she, they, they, is going to have the wisdom symbol is going to appear four times on their D6. The might is going to appear twice and the eyeball, the uh, cunning is going to appear twice. And then each character also has a double, which is going to count for both symbols, as well as a shield. And the shield allows them to block incoming hits from monsters. So you're going to take your characters. You're going to take your character D6 there. Um, I'm just going to take the... Uh, sometimes that is one criticism I have of the game, is sometimes it can take just a little bit to find your character's uh, die there. And then if you have one of the expansions, you get one of these traits. And these are going to just add a little bit of spice to your character. So you can... Uh, look at those so let's see our miller is gullible once per game when you rest restore two hp to your uh character and one hp to the character of your choice and callous uh once per game after surviving a combat draw three item cards instead of one and then depending on like your difficulty or depending on the starting way that you're going to play the game you also could draw an item I usually draw two items. Uh, it's, it, it's a way to kind of uh, spice up the game a little bit. You can a uh, way to increase or decrease the difficulty if you want to. However, in this item deck, there are some bad cards as well. So there are some good cards. You will find like some weapons that you can use, uh, some daggers. You will get some, uh, some cheese to help you heal, some food, different kinds of potions to help you pass certain tests. Again, different kinds of weapons, uh, healing spells, different potions, a bag, different things that help you carry more. Um, there are some events. And on top of that, there are also some curses, which are absolutely terrible. So this one is called Accelerated Decay. When this card is drawn, place it to one side and finish drawing the number of item cards dictated by the chapter card. These are called chapter cards. These dungeon cards are called chapter cards. 
and uh, curse cards do not count towards their this number. Then apply this curse. All items just drawn crumble to dust before your very eyes. Discard them now along with the curse card. So you could draw that at the beginning of the game and not get the benefit of any items. You will have some um, spe super special items like this golden axe. And that is actually going to give you an additional D6 that will allow you to roll that with your character die that will be able to, it, it, it'll help you in different kinds of challenges and, and fighting monsters and that kind of thing. But there's a good variety of cards and there's also these plague cards, which is from one of the expansions. And that is gonna come with this plague D6 that you're gonna have to roll. And depending on certain things that happen, you will take damage and die and basically you're going to take your party of characters you're going to have to work your way through the dark castle trying to escape fighting the boss at the end and all of the characters have to survive in order to win the game and it can be quite challenging a lot of that has to do with luck because of the way that the game plays is you're going to be rolling a lot of d6 so let's say you were starting off like this uh, having escaped your wretched cell and in your haste to seek out the exit of this abominable place, your very first step of exploration leads you down an errant path, a dead end. Shuffle one additional chapter card. So then you would have to uh, go through an, an additional card, making the, your escape more difficult. All is not lost, however. This particular dead end appears to serve as some manner of storeroom. You quickly take as much as you can carry. Draw two items per player now. Strange distant sounds begin to fill the air and you sense your absence has now been noticed by your captors. They are coming for you. So then you would go to the first chapter and basically you're gonna take this U token and you can pass that around. You can say pass it around counterclockwise, clockwise. You can pass, you could just say, hey, who wants it? Whoever wants to take it grabs it. Whoever has this token that says U on it reads the card. They are like the subject of the card. So this chamber carries an unnatural echo. You hear deranged chattering all around you. Scanning the darkness, you catch sight of your attacker at the last moment. You must try to roll cunning or a double in one attempt. So if I was you, and let's say I was playing as the shepherd, I would need to roll cunning or double. And cunning is the eyeball. So he's not very good at cunning checks. But let's see what I would roll. Okay, so I rolled a double. I, had, I rolled a, um, a wisdom and a, and a cunning. So if you succeed, you narrowly evade the cultist's strike, begin combat. If you fail, his club strikes your brow and you are thrown to the ground, lose two HP and begin combat. So different things will help you um, depending on how you roll like that. And then you would start combat. And combat is relatively simple. You're going to uh, look down here. This symbol here means you're going to take a chapter die. And this represents kind of like the enemy's strength. You're going to take one per um, hero that you're playing. So we would take two. And then you're going to take one set to um, might. So we're going to take one set to might. The other two are going to be random. So we have a cunning and a cunning. And then, so these are the dice faces that we have to um, overcome in order to win the game. And you match symbols and you remove symbols. If there's any left, then the monster is going to do damage back to you. But if you roll your shield, you block and so on. And you keep doing that. Once per round, one character can rest to regain HP and you're going to keep track of your HP on this tracker here with these sweet little metal skulls and that's going to go down and if you ever reach the end you die if one character dies that is the end of the game and one of the very coolest things about this game is the death book when you die you look up the card number in the death book to see how your party was eviscerated and each card has a number and it's very tiny 
And without my glasses on, I will have a difficult time reading it, but this is DCA1 CH11. So you're gonna look through this book and you're gonna find that card and you're gonna read it. Let's see if I can find that real quick. DCH. This is one thing, it does take a little bit of time to find that. I think I'm, I'm just going to turn to a random one. So let's say that we were killed by this card here. This is the one. Uh, with one terrifying bite, your upper body disappears into the creature's snake-like throat. Its jaws clamp around your waist and it slithers away, dragging you, kicking and screaming into its domain somewhere deep within the castle walls, where you are slowly digested over a thousand years. With one of their mind, with one of their number missing, your fellow prisoners are unable to withstand the ensuing onslaught of evil. They are soon surrounded up, enslaved, and damned to eternity of torture. Your adventure ends here. So the, the flavor text on the deaths is super cool. I always have a great time reading those because they're always super creative with all kinds of gross and, disgust and disgusting ways to, uh, <laughs> to die, to meet your end. But as you're playing at various times, you will also discover some companions which can join your party. And each of those companions is going to come with one of their own D6. So you're going to have like the guard, the spirit, and the witcher. So the spirit of the first prisoner, the defecting guard, and the witch hunter. And then there are also some other special dice. So this is the rule book for the core game. Then we have this supplemental uh, rule book for Adventure Pack 1. The Cult of the Death Knight. And you're going to get some cult dice. And uh, that comes with the curse cards, some more characters, and more chapter cards. And this is going to be used, this curse uh, D6 will be used at certain points during the game, uh, depending on when you're um, fighting cultists. And the cultists are going to be marked with a symbol uh, that we saw. What was that cultist? Uh, that is like the cultist symbol there. And then we have Supplement 2, Adventure Pack 2, uh, The Scourge of the Undead Queen. And this comes with the companions. And then you have your companion uh, D6. And you also have a spell book, which was one of the special items. And that spell book comes with its own D6 that you're going to be able to add to uh to your when you're rolling your pool of dice to figure out uh, your, your strength in combat and how you overcome challenges and that's going to have the different symbols for your d6 there to letting you know what happens when you use your spell book then we have adventure pack three blight of the plague lord blight of the plague lord comes of course with the plague uh d6 there some more items and your plague cards and as plague ticks up, the better chance you have of dying, of, of losing health. So it's just another way to make the game a little more difficult. And then there was also this collector's of boxers, was this giant, I mean, huge box that fits everything, but it took up so much space and everything fits in this tiny little box already that I, I tossed the collector's box. But the collector's box did come with some gameplay components like those character cards, the flaw cards that I showed you at the beginning. Um, it comes with uh, this living stone card and die. And then also um, that's this right here. I believe, I, I can't remember if I've actually ever drawn that in a game. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't think we ever have. And it came with these uh, reference cards, just some things to make the game a little easier. It came with the, the big, metal U token and then these uh, prologue cards for that you read uh, when you have either victoriously escaped the dungeon or been defeated but the death book kind of takes control of now I believe that there was a stretch goal that you could have purchased a nicely bound death book but I just downloaded the PDF and printed it and had it spiral bound but this is just a fantastic game. It's it's super fun. It's a breezy. Um, 
it's just, it's it's a great way to end an evening of game playing, and it's it, it's just always a hit. There's always something unique that happens. Uh, there's fun. It, it always elicits just a ton of laughter at the table. And it's just, it, it's a really great way to end a night of gaming with some friends. And I think that I, for me, that is the best way to play this game. And as you can see, when you get all the expansions, you just have a ton of cards and you're only going to be going through uh, 15 of these per game and so you can play this game just a ton of times before you uh, ever start to seeing um, repeating cards but as I've said before I absolutely love the art in this game um, I like the writing a lot it's flavorful it's exciting I wish there were more games in black and white like this this and like cave evil and what's that one coming out cryptic explorers cryptic explorers I I, I backed, but it, it's it's such a, just a competitive game, um, same as Cave Evil, that I, I doubt I will ever actually play it. But we'll, we will take a look at, at two of those games, at those two games in the future, just because I think they're, they, they're, they have such bold artistic visions, and I think they make a statement with, with their game, or with both of those games. Not that they're from the same creator. But... Uh, and of course, this game just, you know, it brings back memories of, of uh, the fighting fantasy books and that kind of thing. It's kind of like a really quick fighting fantasy. You're not really, you're not so often making narrative choices. Some of the cards will have a choice that you can make, but they're not going to lead on to an ongoing narrative. It is very episodic. Each card is like a little episode. Kind of think of it as a truncated adventure where the connective dots of an adventure the walking from place to place is not shown you're only shown like the the exciting set pieces of this party's adventure while they're trying to escape the dark castle but i did want to get um, another game onto the table because i know i've been doing a lot of book reviews lately and i know there's probably some people that hate that and like come on get back to the games uh, but unfortunately i am going to be doing a lot of book videos coming up but I'm going to try to to also pepper that in because I, I did just do that games workshop video and, and, and I'm going to try to pepper in some game stuff here and there and I did really want to get this game to the table for a um, for a review just because I think it is such a fantastic game that deserves all of the attention that it can get now I know the new one is coming out soon that is uh, what is it escape the dark station I believe the sci-fi version so uh, I'm not sure if you can still pre-order that or not or when that will become available um, and I'm to tell you the truth and I'm sorry I don't know if if what on this table right now is available to buy I have never seen this game in a in a game store I'm not sure if it's at retail it might be i hope it is and i hope it does well because it really deserves all of like the praise that it gets i know there's some people that don't like it some people do not like the art and they think it looks amateurish or kind of drab but i am not one of those people i am fully on team escape the dark castle so all right guys well i hope you enjoyed this look at this fantastic little adventure game and we will talk to you guys later. Take it easy. Bye-bye.